Now let's introduce effective capacity of a resource pool. This is a resource pool that contains six resource units who perform similar or interchangeable work. C sub i is the resource unit, T sub i is unit load, and 1 over T sub i is the effective capacity of one resource unit. Therefore, the effective capacity of the resource pool is the sum of the effective capacities of each resource unit. If you sum the effective capacity of each resource unit, you have the effective capacity of, the, of this resource pool. So 1 over T sub 1, T sub 2, and so on. If we have C sub i, the number of a resource unit, times 1 over T sub i, the effective capacity of one resource unit, then C sub i over T sub i is the effective capacity of a resource pool. For example, if we have six units, uh, C sub i is six, the resource pool has six uh, units, then the average time per customer, T sub i, is two minutes, then effective capacity is six times one over two or three customers per minute. So this is the effective capacity of, of, uh, of a resource pool. We can also add two more elements in determining the effective capacity of a resource pool. One is this, uh, what we refer to as the scheduled availability. is the amount of time a resource unit is available to perform work. Eight hours, six hours, three hours. And then load batching, if the work is actually performed in batches, as in bakeries. So therefore, the effective capacity of a resource pool is C sub i over T sub i times a scheduled availability times load batching. In, next, in, ne in our next section, we'll introduce a complete example that takes some of these elements into account.